By the end of this video, I'm going to list five things that if you hear your shop's leadership saying, then your shop sucks. I once worked for a short period of time at a machine shop in Houston, Texas. The shop was really an incredible place. It had maybe 40 CNC mills and lathes, mill turns, EDMs, dual turret, dual spindle lathes with live tooling, and a couple really nice five axis mills hooked up to a 34 pallet linear pallet pool. The owner was a super smart guy and he had been a machinist for over 40 years before he started his own shop. When it came to tooling, fixturing, and equipment, he really spared no expense. All of the machinists that worked there programmed and ran their own parts and they were all some really skilled guys. But they were all using a very old version of Mastercam, version 7, and at the time I was used to using version 16. I was brought in to program and run the 5-axis mills on the pallet pool, and when I looked at all the programs in the machines, I was completely blown away to see that every part they had ever done was programmed as 3 plus 2 positioning using a different work offset for every different rotation. Now the guy that had programmed and run these machines no longer worked there, so I spoke to the owner and asked why they did it that way. He told me that the machines were not capable of synchronous 5-axis, only indexing. But I knew these machines as I had spent the previous three years programming and running the exact same ones. So I went back to my desk, programmed some synchronous 5-axis toolpath, and tested it on the machine. No surprise, it worked great. Almost immediately after that, I noticed that I couldn't store a large program in the control, and I saw that there was no data server set up. I went through the original machine quote documents and saw that both machines were equipped with data servers that had never been used or even set up, as well as being equipped with dynamic work offsets, tool center point control, and tilted work plane, which had all never been used either. Now the system I was working on here represented a very large capital expenditure for a medium sized job shop, around $5 million. And this system had been in place for over four years before I started working there. So for all that time, these machines were being almost completely wasted. Sure, they were making money, but they could have easily been five times more efficient and profitable if the company had spent the money to upgrade their software and brought in a programmer that knew how to get the most out of their equipment. When the owner and other machinists saw what those mills were actually capable of, they couldn't believe what they were seeing. I regularly had a small group of guys peering through the windows of my mills, mesmerized by the full 5-axis toolpaths. Now these guys also didn't have any CAD software. I showed the owner what was possible with SolidWorks, as we would sit there discussing fixturing ideas together, and I could literally create the models while we talked. They ended up buying several seats of SolidWorks a few months later, and this was far from the only shop I've seen that had similar issues. I went into a small machine shop in San Antonio, Texas, just to help out part-time with some programming at the request of a friend of mine. They were struggling to get work out the door, as their programmer had been out with health issues for over a month. To help them out on a temporary, part-time basis, I agreed to work for a much lower rate than usual, as the owner almost had a heart attack when I told him my usual rate. But when I went out into the shop, I immediately saw what the problem was, and it wasn't just the lack of a programmer. They were running the current version of Mastercam, but for the four CNC mills and two CNC lathes, there was one machinist. And when I asked him to set up a couple of tools, he didn't know how. I asked him how much experience he had, and he told me that he was an electrician, and he was desperate for a job, so he'd started at this place a few months ago as a trainee at a very low pay rate. I asked him to show me their cutting tools, and all they had were a few high-speed steel end mills and drills, no carbide. I was like, what the hell am I looking at right now? I bought a couple carbide end mills and the electrician slash operator was awestruck at how fast we were peeling away steel. Now this shop was not climate controlled, so it was hot. And I had to set up all the jobs myself, which was not something I had agreed to do. So I helped out where I could for a couple months and I got out of that place as fast as possible. But after I left, the owner began buying carbide tools. In a similar situation, I agreed to spend some of my spare time to help out a local shop in New Braunfels that my brother was working at. Now, my brother is a good machinist, and these guys had decent tools and current cam software. But their machines were getting on in years, to the tune of being around 20 years old. They had quoted a bunch of 5-axis work in magnesium, but only had 4-axis machines. So we had to figure out so many things to even make machining these parts possible. Things from drip feeding the programs, the work holding, the compensating for mechanical issues with the machines, 
Suffice it to say that we ended up doing some very sketchy stuff to get through those jobs. The age and condition of these machines were such that these jobs got done, but it took at least five times the amount of time and energy to get them set up and going as it should have. The point of these stories is that you will never be a world-class CNC machine shop if you do not invest in at least these five things. Modern machines, modern CAM and CAD software, modern cutting tools, repeatable work holding, and employees that are knowledgeable and have a proven track record of success with all of these modern methods. If you lack even one of these, then you're doing yourself and your company a huge disservice. Now, I fully understand that some shops might just be making rectangles out of plastic all day, and maybe not all of these items are a necessity for your particular shop. And a small shop that's just starting up may not be able to afford all these things right off the bat. But these things should be among the very first things that you invest in as finances allow if you hope to be world class. I've seen countless companies that for some reason think that buying a new machine with incredible capability is going to fix all of their problems. And then their software can't push it or their employees can't run it or their tooling is so sad that they never break 2% spindle load. There are literally thousands of shops out there that have 10 plus machines and 20 employees that would be more efficient with just one machine and the tools to take full advantage of that single spindle. I've gone into tons of shops where the programmers tell management that simple tasks are impossible when really they just don't know how to do what's being asked of them. There's shops that tell me they can't buy carbide tools because their machinists constantly break their high speed steel tools. Shops that don't understand why a 2D cam software can't do full five axis programming. You know, a salesman is going to tell you that all you need to do is buy this one thing to fix all of your problems. And as soon as you write that check, they vanish. Don't go buy a new machine unless every spindle you have is at 80% or more utilization over two shifts. There are several absolutely critical components to a successful shop, and if you implement them exactly when and where you should and research the return on investment and peripheral requirements of every addition to your shop, you're going to be more successful than your competition by orders of magnitude. Here are the top five sentences that I've heard in my career that will destroy your CNC machine shop or at the very least keep you in an ever-decreasing state of profitability and mediocrity. And if you find yourself saying any of these, you need to reevaluate your attitude or your shop is absolutely on its way to closing its doors. It may take a few months or it may take a few years. Number one, if we buy this new machine, it'll solve all of our other issues with inefficiency. Number two, we can't afford to buy modern CAM or CAD software. Our 10-year-old software and conversational programming is good enough. Number three, we can't afford to hire an elite programmer. Let's just hire a cheap guy and we'll make do. Number four, our 30-year-old machine still works just fine. We don't need to buy a new one. Number five, we can't afford carbide tools. They cost three times what a high-speed steel tool costs. If you guys are working in a shop like any of the ones I mentioned, share this video with your supervisor, managers, or owners, and invite them to comment down below. If they want to have a more in-depth discussion, I'll see them there. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys again soon.